Wow, good morning. Good morning. Wow, we could do better than that. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What a great entrance, thank you, our band. My name is David Yeager, and I have the privilege of serving as the President and CEO of the University of the Arts. And I'm going to take my mask off. And so I really want to have a document because I don't believe we're all here together after two years. Everybody give me a nice wave. It is my great pleasure and honor to formally open the University of the Arts commencement exercise. I cannot overstate how meaningful it is to celebrate commencement in person. In this amazing space that really represents the best of Philadelphia. We have an incredible ceremony planned for you today, including, as you know, several extraordinarily, extraordinary guests. As we begin, I ask you to please stand and join me in welcoming the University of the Arts Z Band under the direction of Matt Gallagher and graduating senior Victoria Stace from the School of Music's Vocal Performance Program under the direction of Liz Redagonda, who will perform America the Beautiful. For spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountain majesties. Please be seated and join me with another round of applause for our commencement ensemble and our vocal performance students. Little changeover. Good morning again. Thank you again to all the performers, faculty members, and staff 
who make each and every commencement special in a way that is distinctively you arts. Thank you to your families, friends, and supporters who have joined us here today, who have supported our graduates. A special thanks, and I'm going to ask them to stand, to my board of trustees who continue to support the university. Board members, if you want to stand up for a second. It has already been an incredibly positive morning. And I can feel the difference between this commencement and other commencements. I think for two reasons. One, it's been a long time. And many of the students graduating this year spent two years working virtually. But we're just getting... But we're just getting started, and it's heartening to be back in person. At every commencement, tradition allows the university president to share a few words of encouragement with our graduates, a true highlight of my role at UArts. I am sure that you are all excited to hear from the honorary degree recipients, as I am too, so I will be brief. To the class of 2022, it is my honor to be the first to offer you congratulations. You've done it. And I could not be more proud of you. I recognize how hard you have all worked and how many significant challenges you overcame in arriving at this milestone. So I share your excitement as we gather today as a community of artists in person in this beautiful historic place. Please join me now in taking a moment to exhale and recognize your own personal achievements. Enjoy the presence. Many of us have a hard time doing that. Take a moment today and realize what you've accomplished. During the early days at UArts, few could have imagined the challenging circumstances that would ultimately confront you. Few still could have envisioned you facing them so successfully. But that's precisely what you did. Though you spent two years living and learning apart, you did create together. Moreover, you did so with beauty, grace, and compassion for one another. For that, you will always have my deepest gratitude and admiration. Now, as you graduate and we begin to explore a profoundly changed world together, I hope you will continually learn and grow from the lessons these past few years have taught us. In many ways, living several years of our lives through screens and experience the presentation of others' lives carefully curated and manicured, inadvertently reshaped our perception of reality, instilling a false sense of perfection. Very few of our online personas reveal failure or flaws. And when they do, those narratives remain carefully constructed. So I urge you as artists to look beyond those illusions and sustain your authentic selves sustain your authentic selves. Get messy, make mistakes, take risks, collaborate, have empathy, be patient, grow, and discover. More importantly, I urge you to remain connected to one another in a real and tangible ways. A particular energy emerges from building community and there are no substitutes for coming together to work collaboratively and across artistic disciplines. Though the concept of a town hall or town square has disappeared. And what we find is the opposite of a town hall. 
We find the algorithms that engineer our social media platforms, which are designed and continually refi refined to feed you content that activates your brain's pleasure centers and keeps you scrolling while generating lots of revenue for corporations. As we all delight in the connection and content we find online, always be aware that these powerful platforms, more often than not, are echo chambers and not open platforms for discussions. You may be wondering why I mention this, why social media may function as today's town squares. It often fails to amplify perspectives that differ from one's own perspectives. It's easy to believe that our beliefs, perspectives, and politics are represented broadly. And we may overlook times when it is necessary to take a stand or become active in advancing something we care deeply about. As artists reacting to, imagining, and representing your experience in society, I hope you will seek out new and different voices from all corners of our world. Your creative practice and all of us around you will be much better for it. Throughout your time at UArts, I am certain you have heard the word creativity more times than you could count. And I'm undoubtedly responsible for many of those, so I will take the, the credit and the crash on that. The consistent reinforcement of that term is imperative as, our, as my deepest belief that creative thinkers, especially all of you here today, will help give meaning to our collective experience now and in the future. Our broad landscape is rapidly changing, socially, politically, and economically. In rising to face all these unprecedented challenges, you've continually proven that artists are the necessary catalyst for meaningful change in our society and the betterment of the world. I genuinely believe that your success will be grounded in these ideals of creativity and innovative thinking. As artists, you must leverage your empathy, adaptability, and keen understanding of innovation to alter our conditions for the better. You all can help the future. It is my distinct pleasure to celebrate this day with you as we stand on the cusp of your creative lives and fruitful careers. Congratulations to every one of you, your families and friends, and your supporters on this very long journey. Thank you. I now have the honor of introducing Judd Aaron, Chair of the University Board of Trustees, and also a proud alum to deliver greetings on behalf of the board. Chair Aaron. I love this building. Good morning. I'm Judd Aaron. As David told you, Chair of the Board of Trustees of University of the Arts, I'm also an alum, Bachelor in Saxophone Performance, Class of 81. Thanks. It's, that's 1981. <laughs> Welcome to the parents, family, and friends of the UArts Class of 2022, and of course, Welcome to our graduates. Three words leap to mind about this graduating class. Fortitude, determination, resilience. These words refer to someone who has faced and recovered from adversity. In the face of pandemic, you exhibited those character traits, fortitude, resilience, and determination. Yeah. 
You know, for, for many people, having to work at home during the pandemic really wasn't so bad, right? No morning and evening commute to work, working from the comfort of your home, uh, easily meeting with colleagues via Zoom, and, you know, running errands in the middle of the workday. But for student artists, it was not easier. It was exponentially harder. Dancers lost their dance troops, their dance spaces. Actors lost their theaters, their stages, their sets. Musicians lost their recording studios and practice rooms. Visual artists lost their light-filled studios and specialized equipment. And you all lost face-to-face -face collaboration with your peers. And yet, despite the COVID shutdown, you created first-rate art. We viewed your big band performances online as you played together in sync and in tune from scattered locations. We watched you dance beautifully and gracefully in your living rooms and in outdoor spaces and safe spaces. We saw you stage theater productions collaboratively and as a cohesive ensemble, although separated by miles. We relished your visual art as it was displayed to us online. So thank you. And thank you to your deans and your professors and your instructors for shining the bright light of arts on what was a rather bleak landscape. Thank you. Now, before I ask my fellow trustees to stand again, I, I want to tell you why we serve as trustees, why we volunteer a great deal of time and resources to the university. We serve because you inspire us to do so. You inspire us with your talent and dedication, your ambition, your enthusiasm, your craft, and most of all, you inspire us with your art. If my fellow trustees will please stand. Thank you. Yeah. And on, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, congratulations on your graduation from University of the Arts. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Aaron, and of course our Board of Trustees. Each year our faculty nominate outstanding individuals from their respective schools to deliver the valedictory's address. The students are asked to reflect on their experience at UArts and to offer words of encouragement to their fellow classmates. I now call on Janai Gibson Sellex, a graduating senior from Graphics Design Program, to deliver the student valedictory address. Thank you, President Yeager and our Board of Trustees. And a big thank you to our faculty, family, and friends for getting us here to this day. And congratulations to the University of the Arts graduating class of 2022. We made it, y'all. We made it. And as we come together to celebrate this incredible milestone, I know that every single one of us is sitting here full of excitement. 
gearing up to step into our new careers and dreaming big for our new futures. But we are also likely questioning our readiness, asking ourselves, can I really do this? It is the question we asked when our parents removed our training wheels from our bicycles, when we took our driver's test, and when we arrived on our university campus as first year students, tasting this level of independence for the first time ever. Though, when I arrived at the University of the Arts as a first year, it was not my first time. It was my third attempt at pursuing my bachelor's degree after failing out of two other universities. Yeah, I failed twice. <laughs> and it was about my 100th time asking myself, can I really do this? I soon learned just how delicate that question is. It holds the power to transform into self-doubt if we don't truly believe in ourselves. I completed my first semester here with a 1.62 GPA. <laughs> journey, y'all. It's been a journey. <laughs> a past due tuition bill and an eviction notice. <laughs> but what ain't me, y'all? What ain't me? Not only because of the hardships that I was facing at the time, but because my self-doubt taunted me throughout that entire semester telling me that I would never attain the life that I had always envisioned for myself, telling me that I cannot do this. And I surrendered to that for a time until I chose to stop allowing my past and my fears define me. <laughs> I gave myself a fresh start. Returning to UArts the following year, this time believing in myself, believing that I belonged at this university, and believing that I am an artist. And today, you, my class, will give yourselves a fresh start, putting down any self-doubt you may be carrying because the fact that you are here right now, today, in those seats is proof that you have everything that it takes to create full and flourishing lives as the creatives you are. This community at UArts has trained us in our crafts, nurtured our unique voices, and held our hands as we trudged through sleepovers in our studios over finals week, caffeine highs, a global pandemic riddled with professors trying to figure out how Zoom works, and so many other absurdities along the way to this spectacular day of our commencement. <laughs> the day we begin anew. Our beloved Toni Morrison once wrote, you wanna fly? You gotta give up the shit that weighs you down. <laughs> so put down your fears and transcend into your new lives with trust, confidence, 
and pride in who you are as artists. Because you can really do this. You already are. Thank you. Thank you, Janai, for those inspiring words, and congratulations. At each commencement, the President Awards are bestowed upon graduate, graduating students who, over the course of their time at the university, have demonstrated academic and artistic excellence of the highest order. Each award carries with it a $1,000 prize. <laughs> Start your summer vacation. Every year, I'm faced with the challenging task of selecting the award winners from an extraordinary group of nominees. The selected students have presented work that is intellectually persuasive, artistically adventurous, collaborative, and entrepreneurial. The first award, the President's Award for Cross-Disciplinary Excellence, goes to an undergraduate in the School of Music for their exploration of intersection of music and multiple other art forms through which they have refined their practice and shaped their sense of relating to others in the world as a whole. I'd like to bring up Corey Seals. Wow, I guess we made the right decision. <laughs> the President's Award for Outstanding Service to the Community goes to an undergraduate student in graphic design for the focus on the underserved and marginalized that they have brought to their coursework and co-curriculum pursuits. They are simultaneously a designer and an advocate Jai Nai Gibson Select. <laughs> I mispronounced her name, Jane. I'm sorry. None of these students knew about any of these awards also, which makes it really nice. <laughs> the President's Award for Excellence in Creative Practice goes to two students, an undergraduate student in dance for their distinctive performance ability to express themselves through their creative practice and in-depth investment in examining and including other artists and writers in their work, Song Tucker.
and to a graduate student in product design for their deep investment and success in designing and advancing unusual creative objects and materials, including mycelium, a biocompositable material. Li Wen Kuo. I guess Lee is not here. That's the problem with not telling anybody they're getting an award. I'll but, take it for him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. We have a mere volunteering. That's great. <laughs> the President's Award for Critical Inquiry goes to two students. In the School of Film, an undergraduate student for their sophisticated stream writing, unusual aesthetic, and ability to integrate and comment on social political issues through their work. Lucky Marvel. He also has one of the best names I've seen, Lucky Marvel. <laughs> and in the Museum Studies program, a graduate student for their examination of the experience of museum visitors on the autism spectrum and a proposed design for a platform to internationally address related issues and create productive, inclusive pathways within museums and cultural institutions. Amelia Hoskins. So our graduate students don't like to show up. <laughs> the President's Award for Innovation goes to an undergraduate student in the photography program for their exceptional boundary-pushing three-dimensional integrated compositions, Devin Toms. Congratulations to all of our award winners, and I have to say there were many other that were deserving. It's always a difficult process, but clearly this year by the other students here, we made some right choices, so I thank you. It is now time to present the recipients of our faculty awards. I call on Professor Steven Saylor, Associate Professor in the School of Film, to come forward. The Lindbach Distinguished Teaching Award is given to a faculty member who exemplifies excellence in teaching and has made an outstanding contribu contribution to the university over the course of several years. This year's recipient is Associate Professor Steven Saylor of the School of Film. Congratulations, Professor Saylor. I now call on Adjunct Associate Professor Danita Clark from the School of Dance to come forward. <laughs> the 
The President's Distinguished Teaching Award recognizes excellence by an adjunct faculty member who has made an outstanding contribution to the university. This year's recipient is Adjunct Associate Professor Danita Clark of the School of Dance. We also should congratulate her that she is becoming more part of the faculty at the University of the Arts. <laughs> Please join me in recognizing these extraordinary faculty members whose teaching, whose guidance, whose mentorship have such a positive impact on so many of our students, and there are many other faculty we could be recognizing today. So a round of applause for all of our faculty. Now, please welcome the University of the Arts Transfusion Ensemble under the direction of Chris Farr. And you are its graduating vocal performance majors under the direction of Liz Redagonda. As, as they perform our commencement tradition with a little help from my friends. Just stand up and walk out on me. Lend me your ears and I'll sing you a song and I'll try not to sing out a key. Oh, I'll get by with a little help from my friend. Oh, do you 
Wow, another incredible performance. <laughs> A little help from my friend is truly one of our favorite traditions. And I've said before, I've heard stories from graduates who say they look forward to auditioning for the honor of performing at commencement in that very competitive environment. So thank you, everyone. So I'm now pleased to present a special guest, Jeffrey Kirshner, Class of 2000, Bachelor of Fine Arts in Acting, to present for the Alumni Association. Now, we don't want to get too parochial where we're only cheering for our schools, OK? In addition to being a proud University of the Arts alum, Jeffrey serves as the Chief Executive Officer of the Academy Center of the Arts in Lynchburg, Virginia, and is a founder of Ed's End Station Theater Company, which has defined professional theater in Central Virginia for more than a decade. Jeffrey is also an incredible teacher and has been a faculty member here at the University of the Arts, as well as at Florida State University, Daytona State College, and University of Lynchburg. Please join me in welcoming Jeffrey back to our campus today to deliver greetings on behalf of the Alumni Association. I can tell where the theater students are. As a proud member of the Alumni Council, it is my great honor uh, to represent the Alumni Association and congratulate the class of 2022. The opportunity to volunteer for the Alumni Association has been an opportunity to give back to an institution that as a student taught me the power of collaboration and community. I want to begin by stating that this is a room full of unbelievable grit. This graduating class faced a set of challenges navigating their education that no one envisioned when most of you arrived here in 2018. 
Your fellow alumni have had so much confidence in this class, and this is why. The world is always changing, evolving, becoming something new. You experience this in a dramatic way. And the lessons, this moment will, the lessons you learn from this will propel you forward with the in invaluable power of adaptability. And with your grit and power, I make a request that you deliver your art with great purpose, because the world needs you right now. I want to share a story. The summer between my junior and senior year here at UArts, I was back in my hometown in Virginia for the summer, where I lifeguarded at a public pool. I loved this job. I hadn't articulated for myself at the time why this was so enjoyable, but the nature of our job, which involved CPR and life-saving skills, and we did actually have about a save a day at this pool, meant our work was outward facing and oriented around the well-being of others. There was a great sense of purpose, which at this moment I was seeking and for a number of reasons hadn't yet found in my own artistry. One very hot afternoon, the pool was particularly crowded. A number of community centers had arrived with young children, many of whom didn't know how to swim. On this particular day, we had a substitute lifeguard not accustomed to the volume of people and logistics we dealt with. We had seven guard stands around the pool, and I was positioned on one stand, and we had a substitute guard right across from me. This was a particularly busy day in the pool, and I was in the middle of my shift, and the guard suddenly yelled at me, Jeff, and pointed. Now, lifeguards communicate through whistles, which would normally be used to indicate an emergency. I looked to where I thought she was pointing, and there were two teenagers wrestling. And I knew these kids, so I just told them to chill out. It was going to be OK. She'd get over it. And the substitute guard yelled again and pointed once again. And then I saw it. There was a little girl sprawled out, sprawled out on the floor of the pool. It is all a bit of a blur, but I dove in, badly scraped my chest on the bottom of the pool, and got to her. I lifted her out of the water, and I will never forget the sounds and images of this moment. There was screaming and panic all around me, and the little girl was lifeless. White foam had formed around her nostrils and was coming out of her mouth. I got her to the side of the pool where John, our assistant head guard and trained paramedic, was waiting. John immediately began CPR and was eventually joined by a paramedic crew who let him continue the work he had started. Watching John that day was an absolute inspiration. This 10-year-old girl's lifeless body came back to life. She was temporarily blinded from a lack of oxygen, but after being flown to University of Virginia for care, she fully recovered. At this moment, I decided I was going to become a paramedic. I wanted to make a difference like John. I didn't want to focus on myself, on whether I was talented enough, good enough, or funny enough to make it. I had found purpose. My parents pleaded with me to return to my final year here at University of the Arts, and I complied, but something had shifted in my thinking around my life goals as I returned here to Broad Street. I carried this shift into the office of one of my favorite professors, Dr. Toby Zinman, in the Humanities Department. Toby knows Toby. I shared with Toby my story and how I wanted to become a paramedic because in that profession I could save lives. Toby then said something that brought it all together in an instant. She said, that paramedic's job is to bring that little girl back to life. An artist's job is to make her life worth living. And indeed, an artist's job is to make life worth living. My career has oddly taken me back to my hometown, which I did not envision for myself when I sat where you are 22 years ago. That pool is still operating, and that little girl is now an adult and may have children of her own. I like to imagine, as my art center develops and presents artistic work, that she is sitting in the audience of a performance, that her little girl is taking one of our pottery classes, or that her family comes upon artwork that is hanging in a satellite gallery and it brightens up their day. So to this class of incredible grit, this ever-changing world desperately needs you. Please don't forget the purpose of your craft and the understanding of the joy and the healing it can bring the world. You can make lives worth living. Congratulations on a major accomplishment. The Alumni Association could not be prouder of you, and I want to encourage you to connect to the Alumni Association. 
The Alumni Council is looking to provide guidance, tools, and support for you as you move forward in your careers. All you have to do is ask. Again, congratulations and thank you. Thank you, Jeffrey, who, who traveled here today from his hometown of uh, Lynchburg, Virginia, to be with us. It is now time to present the Silver Star Awards for Outstanding Alumni. These awards are presented annually to alumni who have achieved professional distinction, as evidenced by their contributions to their chosen fields. Recipients of this award have made vital contributions to the cultural life of our nation and have helped to broaden the public's understanding and appreciation of the arts. I'd now like to invite Lowell Boston, adjunct associate. <laughs> professor Boston is an adjunct associate professor from the School of Film and also Tommy Wahid Evans and <laughs> who is an assistant professor from the School of Dance to present the university's Silver Star Awards. First, Professor Boston. Good morning. Mm. My name is Lowell Boston, and thank you. <laughs> um, to the University of Arts graduating class of 2022, congratulations. Today I have the pleasure of introducing and presenting the Alumni Silver Star Award to a rising star within the national and international animation and motion picture community. Muse Brooker. Thank you. Muse was one of my students in my early years here at the University of the Arts. He has since moved on from student to alum and from the Distinguished Experimental Animation Program at the prestigious California Institute of the Arts. Fellow alum and animator, friend, filmmaker, teacher, and now an inspiration among our students, African Americans, and more, Musay Brooker, you are a role model. As an animator, Musay's career has taken him from New York City, where he began as a layout artist on MTV's classic series, Daria. <laughs> then as a stop motion animator on the beloved Celebrity Deathmatch show. <laughs> he was a key animator on the stop motion segments of the Christmas smash hit Elf, starring Will Ferrell and Zoe Deschanel. The Simpsons. Robot Chicken, SpongeBob SquarePants, <laughs> were among his other acclaimed animation credits. His working career took him from the East Coast to the West, where he found time to pursue his master's degree at Cal Arts and create his own animation studio, Platypus Picture Works. Today, Musse has the range and experience of a full animation director and producer, visual effects artist, editor, and writer. Since the start of the pandemic, Musse has the distinction of working with executive producer Michelle Obama on the critically hit Netflix show Waffles and Mochi. As the animation director, he used his talents and experience in the mediums of 2D and stop motion animation to enhance the show in ways that are attributed to Musay's expertise and creative skills. Musay, 
You have proven that dreams, hard work, and tenacity can overcome nearly any obstacle. You are now an animation rock star. and will serve to inspire our faculty, students, and family and friends, and any who have the pleasure to watch your work in all of its magic. It is my pleasure and honor to present to you the University of the Arts Alumni Silver Star Award. Congratulations. President Yeager, members of the Board of Trustees, esteemed fellow faculty members, and especially the graduate class of 2002, and especially my beloved School of Dance folks, and family and friends of the members of the graduate. I, Tommy Waheed Evans, had the distinctive honor today to introduce to you one of our most distinguished faculty, distinguished, sorry, distinguished alumni and friend, Jeffrey Page. Unfortunately, Jeffrey was unable to join us from Boston today due to the scheduling demands of the Broadway revival 1776 <laughs> and additional unforeseen circumstances. Jeffrey reminds me of possibility. He invites an optimistic premise that serves as a catalyst for the work. His work and the work of others is always in constant collaboration. I had the honor of witnessing Jeffrey's genius in his recent work for the Philadelphia Theater's company production, Choir Boy. If you didn't see it, you missed it. <laughs> Narratives of black men's tenderness and growth are not often staged or phased in a way that creates a space of reconciliation. The space between being feared and being loved and respected as a black gay man, Jeffrey's artistic and choreographic direction stage a safe space for me. A safe space for me to keep loving, to feel, to question, to see, to renew the acceptance of this body I call home. He reminded me that there is a poetic gravity in, re in renavigating the world and to challenge narratives that seek to enforce impossible modes of being. As artists, we sometimes find ourselves engaging with pivotal moments in history with the hopes that new futures can and will be imagined by the work we produce, both individually and collectively. Jeffrey has served as a fount of knowledge, a guide, a roadmap to those of us who seek to redefine customs and to, po and to propose new ways of understanding each other. That coming together in times of grief supporting each other, acknowledging each other, and taking leaps of faith, of love, and of trust can continue to influence the change we wish to see. Congratulations, Jeffrey. I only wish you were here in person with us so I can give you a huge embrace. Thank you. Congratulations, Musay and Jeffrey. You are two shining examples of University of the Arts alumni who enrich our world for the better through compelling and truly vital work. It is now time to confer this year's honorary degrees. The awarding of honorary degrees is a tradition that dates back centuries, recognizing the extraordinary contribution of distinguished individuals to specific fields or to our society. This year, we are thrilled to recognize two extremely influential, multi-talented, amazing artists whose work is a clear reflection of our mission here at UArts, the pursuit of creativity, collaboration, and innovation. 
I am certain everyone here today knows our first honoree, Amir Questlove Thompson. He is an Academy Award-winning filmmaker, drummer, DJ, producer, director, culinary entrepreneur, six-time Grammy winner, and a New York Times best-selling author. Questlove is also a proud native of Philadelphia. Where he's a founding member of the Roots, who are now who are now the house band for the Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon, which you could see tonight. Amir is also an incredibly warm an interesting person. I'll tell you two stories. So we were getting dressed in our robes, and we took some pictures, and we were walking outside to take some pictures, and the band was out there. And before I could turn around, Amir was at the drums playing with our band. <laughs> As I, we walked down the street, right out in front of here, our band was playing and he immediately joined in with that band also. I said to him, it looks like you'd rather be playing in a band than being up here on stage. And he agreed. He also told me a story which, when I Zoomed with him probably, I don't know, nine months ago or so, that when he was six years old, he sat on the steps of our building, the Hamilton building, because he went to school across the street. And so that building also has meaning to him. Throughout all of his work, Kleshov pursued spanning music, television, film, food, food, writing, and demonstrates the important contribution interdisciplinary artists make in bettering our society. Here at UArts, Questlove has supported a groundbreaking fellowship opportunity for our PhD students in creativity and our first fellow will be joining the program this summer. <laughs> Additionally, his book, Creative Quest, is a core text and a source of wisdom for our students in our PhD program in creativity. So we feel connections in lots of different ways to Amir. Questlove, we are honored to have you here today. And I now ask Chair Aaron to join me for the awarding of Questlove's honorary degree. <clears throat> Amir, will you step forward? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to first start. Okay. Love you and everything. By virtue of the authority delegated to me by the Board of Trustees of the University of the Arts from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, I hereby confer upon Amir Questlove Thompson the degree of Doctor of Fine Arts, Honest Causa, with all the rights and privileges. Congratulations, Dr. Questlove. Thank you. Wow. Okay. I used to, um, how's everyone doing? I used to, uh, I used to teach at a, a New York institution.
And uh, my students used to call me Professor Love. So now I'm very honored that I've come home and sort of elevated to Dr. Love. Yeah. It's awesome. Um, uh, 24 years ago, I stood on this very stage. Now it's a bad ending. <laughs> now, 24 years ago, um, I stood on this very stage and I addressed a bunch of eighth graders at their graduation. No, it, it, it ends bad. Um, <laughs> And you know, I, I prepared this like, it was like my first public speech and you know, we just released um, our, our fourth album was like our, our breakthrough record and, um, and uh, I, yeah, all the parents know things fall apart. Anyway, um, and you know, so my publicist that had convinced me like, yo, you should get, get out there and talk to the kids. And I was like, oh, those kids don't know me, whatever. And so I gave this like really impassioned speech about like, you know, uh, the, the practice and, and, and having a passion and all these things. And when it was time for the Q&A portion, um, like one student had a question and the question was basically, yeah, like, do you know like, like real famous people like Andre 3000 and Avril Lavigne? <laughs> and, um, you know, the, uh, for me at the time, in, in, in 1999, 98, 99, I think the teachable lesson, well, number one was, fuck those kids. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I, I kind of had a never again moment. I vowed never again to put myself in this vulnerable position in which like, you know, and yet here I am again as, as Dr. Love. So thank you. Um, if, if you're familiar with me, if you follow me on social media, you know I'm very loquacious and I'll do these like gargantuan uh, 12 paragraph uh, posts about music history or whatever. But um, I don't know, I'm, I had something prepared, um, but I, I'd rather just wing it and speak from the heart. And, and, and I'll keep it short because I know you guys want to get your diploma. And not to plug myself, but we had the Roots picnic this week and I got Mary J. Blige rehearsal soon, so. Um, but the thing is, is that, you know, all of us, all of us have a, a, a we we're sort of united in common ground with what we went through in 2020. And I will say that uh, be it for the good or for the bad, none of us were ever the same afterwards. Um, so, I, you know, just sitting there, especially uh, he hearing the young lady's uh, journey of her being a 1.89 student and now she's valedictorian. Wow, I was inspired. So I, in instead of, you know, doing the cliche, follow your dreams thing, no, yes, I want you to follow your dreams, but <laughs> Um, it's important for me to really, uh, I guess, really speak from the heart and I'd rather leave you, instead of like the, the grandiose statement that you see every sort of person that is in this position give to you, which will go in, in one ear and out the other, I'd, I'd rather leave you with kind of a, a minuscule seed that um, I'm pretty sure that Will, will stay with you, hopefully will stay with you. Not just if you're graduating, but anyone in this room from the people that work here to the students here. Um, and it's important to, to, to plant small idea, ideas. And um, I think the number one thing uh, that I could say, um, the sort of pressure that we put on ourselves to like win and overachieve, um, that's probably the most dangerous I idea that at least my generation, yes, whatever, my boomer generation, um, and the generation before me and before, you know, like we try to force feed you. Um, and I always felt that that produced diminished results. And, you know, look at where Michael Jackson is, look where Prince is, look where Whitney Houston is, like I can go on and on. Um, for me, art is not, 
even though, yes, I, 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 I do make a, a great living and I found a way to make a great living um, taking my passion and, you know, making a great living out of it. But I think that um, your art really should be your passion and it should be a fire within your soul. And um, your art isn't a key to world domination or to be a billionaire and, you know, to do whatever, and, and you know. And, you know, and I'm, I'm just as guilty for trying to indulge in that, uh, that sort of rat race, you know, I came up in the 90s and we were all trying to play catch up and whatever, be the next Jay-Z and the bloated hedonism and all the hype women's videos, like I was part of that. And um, I realized in 2020 um, that your art has to be your passion. And I find it really ironic, um, you know, I've, I've been in the entertainment business since I was five years old and I find it really weird that at the age of 50 is when my dreams started to come true. Um, and that's because, you know, making Summer of Soul was more about, um, well, first of all, not, not going crazy, just worrying about if my family's okay or if there's enough hand sanitizer. Um, to, everything's getting a woo, even hand sanitizer. <laughs> Um, but, you know, it was a true passion project, and I definitely wasn't in the position of, of thinking like, oh, this is going to be something meaningful one day. I just thought that, okay, I'm going to do something cool and, you know, and, and it'll go away. But um, your art has to be your passion. And um, number two is dream more. Um, there, was a, there was an interview Michael Jackson did in the 70s in which uh, he told uh, Don Cornelius, the host of Soul Train, that his favorite pastime was daydreaming. And, you know, I kind of like scoffed and laughed in that sort of naive Disney Michael way, like, ah, oh, whatever, daydreaming. Like, who, who gives that as an answer? And um, what's really weird is that, uh, you know, I was dismissive about how silly that looked in quotes and only to realize, like, dreams are all that we have. And oftentimes, uh, we're not encouraged to dream. Um, I kind of grew up in a generation where uncles and teachers at my school or whatever, even my own father kind of wanted me to find something safe. Like I lived in fight or flight. Um, if you lived where I lived in West Philadelphia, it was more about getting through the week. You know, like a lot of people had, whoever had a position in the pandemic where they couldn't believe that we're living this life, like. For some of us, that was like an everyday occurrence if you lived in the crack 80s. And so, um, you know, oftentimes, especially people that look like I do, uh, you're not encouraged to dream at all. It's more or less you're encouraged to hustle, survive, you know, you, all those tropes that you hear, like especially in hip hop songs about hustling. And I, I really regret, regret laughing at that because now I think dreaming is the most important thing. Um, and that's all we have. So basically, again, I want you to follow your passion and I want you to dream uh, more. And I'll wrap it up, I promised. Um, there's an exercise I would like you guys to do um, after you get your diplomas, because I know that you'll probably feel that, that, that uh, pressure to make something happen now that you have your degree. And um, there's an exercise that I did in the pandemic in which um, I take a bl blank piece of paper, or just get a, a memo, and write the 50 things that you want to manifest for your life. And the reason why I stress 50 is usually because you don't start really getting honest about what you really want to like number 27, you know. <laughs> and, you know, that's when your intentions and your passions really come out. And um, I would also say would behoove you guys, uh, unlike myself the first time I did this experiment, um, to make sure that things like liking yourself, loving yourself, uh, should at least be in your top five, you know, a way above like getting new tires for your car, that sort of thing. <laughs> um, before you start your day, I would like you guys to sort of uh, do an exercise in which um, before you check your email, before you, you know, see how New York Times tries to stump you on Wordle or whatever, uh, 
I do this exercise where I literally, you have to be nice to yourself and you, I go to the mirror and talk to myself for 10 minutes. And the reason why I, I say and stress that's important, because oftentimes the voice in our head, like we're so mean to ourselves. And we say, we say stuff to ourselves that we wouldn't allow anyone else to ever say to us. And you know, I, I got six Grammys, I helped create Hamilton, like I did all this stuff, but I, if anyone, no, 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 time out. I'm just saying that if anyone relishes and lives in that self-doubt imposter syndrome, even at this late stage of life, up until the pandemic, like I was, I was the poster child for that. And, um, you know, I, I recommend that you get into the habit of listening to your dreams and talking and encouraging to yourself because that's, that's important. And, you know, lastly, I just want to say, um, you know, back, back maybe 15 years ago, we, we did this uh, kid show called Yo Gabba Gabba. Wait. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> I, I forgot now that it's 2022, so a lot of you are, are Gabba age now, whatever. Um, the reason, the reason why I, I brought up Yo Gabba Gabba was because that was sort of like the first time in which um, anyone under the age of seven started to, to recognize me and parents would grab me in the airport, you know, this, I mean, this is back in like 2005, 2006, and they would, you know, ask me like, Questlove, like, say something inspirational to my kid, what do you, what do you recommend? And, you know, again, I'd rather be effective than to be performative, and for me, the number one thing that I could recommend is embrace boredom, embrace silence. Why? Yeah. Um, silence is where inspiration truly comes from. And oftentimes, you know, the temptation to check our phones every three seconds, look on TV, to, to self-soothe, self-stimulate. Like we live in an age now where we constantly have to entertain ourselves. And um, it wasn't until the pandemic in which the sound of silence was, was the sound that I heard the most, but it's also where I heard the most I, ideas and inspiration. And, um, you know, if, if you, even if you're in cramped spaces, uh, I'm certain that you could at least do five to 10 minutes in your bathroom. I won't confirm or deny that maybe my first few books were written in my bathroom, so. <laughs> The bathroom is a place to get silence or, or solace, if you will. But silence is golden. And um, you know, once you receive those ideas, you experiment, you, you play with those ideas. I think that we should all go back. When you, when you get passion and inspiration and ideas, we should all go back to when we were five, six years old. And that's when we're at our purest in, as far as creating. And um, you know, I, I just want to say that uh, you know, I'm really, really proud of you guys. I know that often you, you, you dreamed of this moment happening. We didn't think that we would, and we're not over the hump yet. Yes, the, the COVID's not over, but you know, I'm really proud and, and to be a representative of Philadelphia and I'm honored to receive this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for those words, Dr. Questlove. And I hope, on, uh, I hope when you get on Jimmy tonight, he calls you Dr. Questlove. <laughs> Our second honoree is Aaron Destner. <laughs> and I want to welcome his children, which I think are right over there. Um, his wife and his mother who are sitting over there. So welcome. I remember when I got an uh, honorary degree and my 12 and 10 year old came and they, they still talk about that experience. So I know, what it, I know it's a nice, wonderful thing to have your family here with you. 
You may know Aaron best as a founding member of the Grammy Award-winning band, The National, whose albums he has co-written and co-produced for more than two decades, or as a producer for widely recognized and celebrated artists such as Taylor Swift and Sharon Van Eaton. And he leaves in a day to go on tour for the first time in, I think he said, three years, right? In Europe. In getting to know Aaron and learning more about his accomplishments, what resonated with me most was his eagerness to seek out opportunities, to really be a thoughtful collaborator, and someone who would encourage every single student at UArts to explore with their peers across disciplines, new opportunities, and new ideas. His heart is huge. Aaron may tell you that he had little choice but to be a collaborator, having been born a twin. But throughout his career, he has consistently demonstrated the power and ingenuity that emerges when artists work together. Whether at his studio in Long Pond, which serves as a prime creative destination for him and his collaborators, or through the collective called People that he co-founded in 2016, Aaron welcomes all ideas and voices to the pursuit of new connections, experimentations, and possibilities. Aaron, we are truly honored to have you here with us today. And I now ask Judd Aaron to join me and Aaron to also join me. <laughs> By the virtue of the authority, keep forgetting when to put it on and when to take it off. By the virtue of the authority delegated to me by the Board of Trustees of the University of the Arts from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, I hereby confer upon Aaron Dessner the degree of Doctor of Fine Arts Honoris Causa, which all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations, Dr. Dessner. Now your kids need to start calling you doctors. <laughs> wow, thank you so much. I'd like to thank President Yeager and Professor Jonathan Feinberg and the University of the Arts for this incredible honor. It's honestly surreal to be standing up here on the same day as, as Amir, as Questlove, who has been such an inspiration for all of us. Um, I would like to thank my wife, Stina, and my three children, Ingrid, Robin, and Mimi, who are here today. Um, my mom, Sally Dessner, is here also. She worked full-time as a nurse in Cincinnati, Ohio, throughout my whole childhood, and somehow still found the time, even when she was crazy exhausted after work, to encourage me and my siblings to, to chase our dreams. And we're all artists, and uh, we, I wouldn't be here without her. So thank you, Mom. Um, Many of you and your families have made huge sacrifices to reach this point today, and I want to congratulate you on reaching this moment. Um, going through your studies in the middle of a global pandemic, as we've all been saying, is no small feat. So I have so much respect for you and all of your, your professors. Um, congratulations. Um, I want to say that, that I'm sure a lot of you are already thinking about or having anxiety about what comes next, but today you should just feel proud and embrace your, your friends and this school and its community because the, the skills you developed here and this community will remain a wellspring for you and will, remain, will, will help pave your way. Um, I remember the feeling of leaving the structured experience of college after graduation and I suddenly found myself without a clear structure or sense of what comes next. 
I knew I wanted to play music and hopefully earn a living doing so, but it wasn't clear at all how I could do that. So it took several years of working day jobs to support myself while making music at night to reach a point where I could devote myself fully to it. Some of you may be fortunate to achieve success quickly in your chosen field, but many of you will have experiences similar to mine. It will take time to carve out your corner of this industry and for the right opportunities to come. Perhaps the most important advice I can give you today, which is based on my own experience, is to persist. Don't be discouraged if it takes years for you to achieve your goals or to, or to receive the affirmation that you seek. I have worked closely with artists who have had immense success since they were quite young, but the opposite is more common. I was 40 years old when I won my first Grammy in 2016, and... <clears throat> um, the truth is that we had been nominated a few times before, and so I didn't go in 2016. And I was in the I was in the I was in the shower when we won, and, and uh, Ingrid came up and was like, "Daddy, you won a Grammy. Is that bad?" And I said, "No, it's not bad." But um, but my friend Sufjan Stevens, who's a great songwriter, he texted me that day and he said something that was kind of mean, but there was some wisdom in it. He said, "Congratulations, they're giving you an award for sticking around." And, and it was a bit mean, but there was wisdom in his joke, which is that luck is a combination of hard work and persistence. If you commit yourself and work hard, eventually when opportunity comes your way, you will be prepared to seize the moment. I had already been making records with my band, The National, and collaborating widely outside the band in various ways and across disciplines when that first Grammy came. But since then, my career blossomed in ways I could never have imagined. So don't be discouraged if early on you have projects that aren't well received or if you try and fail to get certain ideas off the ground. Learn to take the good reviews with the bad and to have a thick skin because no matter what, you will have moments where you are celebrated, but you'll also have moments where you're judged harshly or dismissed. Both have happened to me. It can be paralyzing in the age of the internet and social media to have, an, to have instant feedback, positive or negative, to your work. So try to stay close to the reason you started making you, your work in the first place, the joy and the emotional catharsis of it, the meaning it gives to your life, and have faith that you will reach the audience you're seeking. Um, I prepared a lot more to say, but I think I'm going to get to the point. Um, uh, I want to share a more recent story with you um, that I think can illuminate the ways in which success can come when you least expect it and the importance of establishing a work ethic and remain, remaining engaged in your process, even if at times you lose hope or are filled with self-doubt, which, like all of us, happens, you know, happens to me, happens to everybody, no matter what you've achieved. Um, so I've been playing in the National with my brother and three other friends from Ohio for 23 years. We went from playing for a few friends in the beginning, or even sometimes being paid not to play <laughs> because no one was there but the bartender. That's actually happened quite a few times, but um, to eventually headlining arenas and festivals around the world. I learned to write and record and produce records in the band, but about 15 years ago, I started making records with other artists. And gradually, I started to write songs for myself and for another project called Big Red Machine with Justin Vernon of Bon Iver. On the, during the last national tour before the pandemic started, this was in December 2019 in Europe, I would set up a small mobile studio every day in the backstage area of the arenas where we were playing. I would write and produce tracks every day with no idea what project they would be for. I found myself in a prolific and highly creative mode, but I could tell this was not music for the national. The tour ended and I went home and then the pandemic started. The live music industry shut down and all our plans, just like everyone else's, were canceled. But I kept working on new music, not because I thought I, it was destined for greatness, but because it was an emotional outlet for me. I was, in, I was excited and engaged, but I had no idea what I was making. And making this music kind of became a life raft in the middle of the pandemic. Um, in April 2020, Taylor Swift texted me out of the blue one night while I was sitting at dinner. And this, <laughs> I, at first I thought it was a friend just you know, joking. Um, and she asked if I, I would consider collaborating remotely together. And I realized I had already made a folder of music that I loved and that I could share immediately. A few hours after I shared that folder with her, Taylor sent back the song Cardigan, written to a track I had made somewhere backstage in Germany, not knowing what it would be for. 
It felt like a lightning bolt had hit the house. It was the first song we made together, and it was later nominated for Song of the Year and became the first single from Folklore, which won Grammy for Album of the Year. And thank you. So since then, Taylor and I have collaborated extensively, and I've learned so much from her. It was a life-changing experience, to say the least. But what I want to say is that had I not been making music just for music's sake, just deeply engaged in my process, not thinking about what it was for, I don't think any of this would have happened. The thought I want to leave you with is to embrace those moments of getting lost in your work, making your work simply for the joy or emotional outlet of it, and working diligently, passionately, and courageously. That's when opportunity might find you, and you will be prepared. And remember, luck is just a combination of hard work and persistence. And if you stick around long enough, they might just start giving you awards too. <laughs> Congratulations. Wow, congratulations, Dr. Destner. And thank you again, Dr. Questlove, Dr. Jessica, for joining us to celebrate. Um, fortunately or unfortunately, um, Questlove has to leave for New York because he has a show tonight. Um, so he's going to leave us, but thank you. It is finally time for the presentation of diplomas. I now invite Krista Apple, Assistant Professor. <laughs> from the Ira Brin School of Theater. To the lectern and I ask the marshals and deans to please take their positions. We now begin the formal conferring of degrees and certificates. I now ask my colleagues to present the candidates for degrees, beginning with Grand Marshal and Dean Wendy Weinberg. It is an honor and a privilege to join my colleagues in presenting the candidates for degrees and certificates from the School of Art, School of Dance, School of Design, School of Film, School of Music, the Ira Brin School of Theater Arts, the Graduate and Professional Studies Program, and the PhD in, Creative, uh, in Creativity Program. I now ask my colleagues to present the candidates in their respective schools and programs. Dr. Feinberg. Would the inaugural uh, cohort of the PhD in creativity please rise? As you are, I see you are. I can barely see out there because the lights are so bright. <laughs> and remain standing uh, until all the degrees have been conferred. President Yeager, Chair Aaron, I present you uh, the extraordinary candidates for Doctor of Philosophy and certify that they have successfully completed the requirements for the degree they, they seek. Hello, good morning. Would the candidates for the degrees in art please rise and remain standing until the degrees have been conferred. 
President Yeager, Chair Aaron, I present to you the candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Fine Arts and Master of Fine Arts and certify that they have successfully completed the requirements of the degrees they seek. Next hat. Would the candidate for the degrees in Graduate and Professional Studies please rise and remain standing until all of the degrees have been conferred? President Yeager, Chair Aaron, I present to you the candidates for graduate certificates and the degrees of Master of Arts and Master of Education and certify that they have successfully completed the requirements of they, that they seek. Dean Birchfield. Would the candidates for the degrees in dance please rise and remain standing until all of the degrees have been conferred. <laughs> President Yeager, Chair Aaron, I present to you the candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Fine Arts and Master of Fine Arts and certify that they have successfully completed the requirements of the degrees they seek. <laughs> Dean Toshe. Hello, everyone. Would the candidates for degrees in design please rise and remain standing until all of the degrees have been conferred? President Yeager, Chair Aaron, I present to you the candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Fine Arts, Bachelor of Science, Master of Design, and Master of Fine Arts, and certify that they have successfully completed the requirements of the degrees they seek. Dean Weinberg. Would the candidates for degrees in film please rise and remain standing until all of the degrees have been conferred. <laughs> President Yeager, Chair Aaron, I present to you the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Fine Arts and certify that they have successfully completed the requirements of the degrees they seek. Dean Jones. Yeah. <laughs> Will the candidates for the degrees in music please rise and remain standing until all degrees have been, have been conferred? <laughs> President Yeager, Chair Aaron, I present to you the candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Music, Bachelor of Science, and Master of Music and certify that they have successfully completed the requirements of the degrees they seek. Dean Alvaro. Would the candidates for degrees in theater please rise and remain standing until all degrees have been conferred. President Yeager, Chair Aaron, I present to you the candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Fine Arts and Master of Fine Arts and certify that they have successfully completed the requirements of the degrees they seek. President Yeager, Chair Aaron, I present to you the University of the Arts Class of 2022. We will now present diplomas. Doctor of Creative Philosophy, of Doctor of Philosophy in Creativity, <laughs> Susanna Eig. <laughs> Abel Gebretsadek. <laughs> Sue.
Susan Gordon. Eugene Hughes. Jessica Hunter. Frank Makos. Patricia Salkin. Cindy Havison Valerick. Master of Arts in Museum Education, Samuel Bunker. Master of Arts in Teaching in Music Education, Benjamin Appel. <laughs> Scott Patrick Blanke. <laughs> Brooke Hansen. Raphael Kraus Pallet. Andrew B. Malabunga. Kevin Rondinelli. Master of Arts in Teaching in Visual Arts, Elizabeth Bongiovanni. <laughs> Daniela Cassetta. <laughs> Oliver Ficci. <laughs> Corianne Hasek. Abayomi Luard Moore. <laughs> Megan Palmer. <laughs> Brittany Tucker. <laughs> Ashley Brooke Wallace. <laughs> Abigail Warren. <laughs> Jennifer Zoflick. Master of Music in Music Education, Lauren Ward. <laughs> Master of Fine Arts in Book Arts and Printmaking, Elena Brown Spence. <laughs> Erica Hansen. Mira Middle. Bachelor of Fine Arts in Craft and Material Studies. Ollie Boyer with a, with a minor in figurative illustration, magna cum laude. Julian Kimball, cum laude. Gabriela Pinedo. Natalie Strickland with a minor in typography. Rachel, Rachel Yankalevitz, cum laude. <laughs> Bachelor of Fine Arts in Creative Writing. John Cleaver with a minor in screenwriting, cum laude. <laughs> Diamante Figueroa, magna cum laude. 
Serena Harmon with a minor in screenwriting, cum laude. Samantha Medina. Sophia Ogden, cum laude. Akila Stroman. <laughs> Bachelor of Fine Arts in Fine Arts. Taylor Fennell with a minor in art therapy. <laughs> Faith Higgins with a minor in art therapy, cum laude. <laughs> Jeremy Iris Williams. Alana Kalbfell with a minor in art education, magna cum laude. Jason Lin. Isabella Malassini, magna cum laude. Megan Meehan with a minor in fibers and textile studies. Kevin Roselli, summa cum laude. <laughs> Sophie Semenza with a minor in art education, summa cum laude. <laughs> Isabella Scarra. <laughs> Zakia Stewart with a minor in art history. Mukhtar Stones. <laughs> Bachelor of Fine Arts in Photography, Alyssa Gilpin. Kayla Jackson. Jessica Kaufman. Ryan McDaniel. Naya Thompson with a minor in figurative illustration. <laughs> Devin Tomes, magna cum laude. Blake Nee Bullock. <laughs> Your school of, school of dance, right? Yes. Bachelor of Fine Arts in Dance. Yes. Masters. <laughs> My friends, masters of fine arts in dance. And tell me your name again. Cameron Michael Eugene Childs. Cameron Michael Eugene Childs. Kyle Clark. Kyle Clark. One more time. Kyle Clark. Kyle Clark. <laughs> Sabrina Rahman. Melvin Sutton. Bachelor of Fine Arts in Dance. Elias Alfau, magna cum laude. Eli Basila with a minor in film and video. Ethan Beckwith Cullen, magna cum laude. Sarah Bovat, minor in business, summa cum laude. Natalie Britton, cum laude. Entree. Entree Brevet Battle. Robert Burden. Jazz, Jasmine Burton. K. Joe Kagan, summa cum laude. Canyon Carroll. Michaela Chiplin, cum laude. Zoe Crenshaw, cum laude. Navaya Dallas with a minor in business. Natalie Devlin, magna cum laude. 
Emma Ducotti with a minor in business, summa cum laude. Christian MacArthur Dudley, Jr. Trinity, England, magna cum laude. Destiny Felder, cum laude. Dominique Michelle Ferraro, cum laude. Aliza Garcia, Garcia? Aliza Garcia, cum laude. Kayla Grudai, summa cum laude. Brianna Gutierrez, summa cum laude. Kiera Haywood, magna cum laude. Madeline Honiger, with a minor in business, magna cum laude. Georgie Ingram, with a minor in creative writing, summa cum laude. Maria Elaine Jacoby, summa cum laude. Leanne Josephan, summa cum laude. Amelia Larson. <laughs> Michael Latt, cum laude. Sol Lee. Noah Hisako Midori Lewis. Ira Lindsay. Kamari Lewis Saint, magna cum laude. Abby Lynch, summa cum laude. Grace Malone with a minor in creative writing, summa cum laude. Josiree Miners, summa cum laude. <laughs> Kenya Moore. Nyree Nurse. Adeline Omen, magna cum laude. Olivia Oskerson, summa cum laude. Gisela Paez, Daniel Palladino, summa cum laude, Rebecca Pantano, summa cum laude, Aaron Rawlings, summa cum laude, Rebecca Reyes, Silka Sali El Bay. Jensen Sears, summa cum laude. Kayliani Sood, summa cum laude. Gracie Spina. Lindsay Swires, magna cum laude. Kelly Thompson, cum laude. Kayla Tater. Song Tucker, summa cum laude. Alexis Votrin, minor in creative writing, cum laude. Braylon Vasquez. Braylon Vasquez. Madeline Wansong, summa cum laude. November Ward, cum laude. Teresa Wagon Watkinson, cum laude. Asa Wells. Kanaya Wilson, magna cum laude. 
Sadie Weiner, cum laude. Master of Fine Arts in Museum Exhibition Planning and Design, Carolyn Quick. Master of Design in Product Design, Cam Dusilon. Bachelor of Fine Arts in Graphic Design, Reagan Abels, summa cum laude. Fabrizio Cabezas with a minor in photography. Connor Campbell with a minor in business. Rachel Curry with a minor in art history. Janae Gibson Selix with a minor in art history. Gina Giordano. William Henry, Joshua Karshnafati, Sonny Kielblock, Catherine Kluge, Hayona Lee, summa cum laude, Dixie Miller with a minor in business, cum laude. Sophie Naylor with a minor in creative writing, cum laude. Yeah. Olivia Penza with a minor in art history. Yeah. Rose Pijak with a minor in creative writing and photography. Brandon Rodriguez. Maria Romero. Heather Thomas with a minor in ceramics. Bachelor of Fine Arts in Illustration, Emily Allen. Aaron Baker, summa cum laude. Micah Behan with a minor in film, cum laude. Alexandra Beale. Sophia Clendenin, magna cum laude. Alexander Cox, magna cum laude. Mark Cruz. Joanna de Dios. Charles Gethers. Lexi Hagelgens, summa cum laude. Mariah Kondash, sorry, Catherine Kennedy, minor in sculpture. Got ahead of myself. Mariah Kondash with a minor in film and video, cum laude. Jamie Curdian, cum laude. Emma Lee. Lisette Melendez. Kayla Mitchell, summa cum laude. Brianna O'Donnell. Kaya Paris. Kaya Paris. Zoe Pena. Christine Pham with a minor in animation, summa cum laude. Farouk Robinson. Yeah. Brianna Russo. David Sampson with a minor in creative writing, summa cum laude. Aaron Schmidt. Kyle Solomon with a minor in business, magna cum laude. Zachary Stiff with a minor in music, summa cum laude. Kiera Townsley. Karina Valentin. Lauren White. Just, just. 
Justin Wilkins. Anastasia Yablonskaya with a minor in creative writing. <laughs> Bachelor of Fine Arts in Animation. Jared Albany, cum laude. Danica Blackburn. Dylan Cahill. Nicole Diaz. Tori Goodman with a minor in film and video. Sabri Ianetti. Lavar Johnson. Tyler Jones. Shelby Caps. Shelby Caps. Morgan Jaira Kersey with a minor in creative writing. Cassandra Lawler, cum laude. Luna Mai. Ren Martin. Hunter Alexandra Medwid Starr. Lauren Mink, magna cum laude. Jalen Shaw Ashanti Cum Laude. Jamir Yorel Tynes Smith. Christian Strange. Linus Wallace with a minor in game art, Magna Cum Laude. Zachary Wise. Bachelor of Fine Arts in Film and Animation, Tyler Bell. Marcel Days. Victoria Waring with a minor in Business. Monet, Ajene Monet Williams. Bachelor of Fine Arts in Film and Video, Lauren Dillon. RJ Feliciano. Anthony Finkel. Elissa Grabowski with a minor in Screenwriting, Film and Media Studies, magna cum laude. Lucky Marvel with a minor in screenwriting, cum laude. Nathaniel Pluto with a minor in film and media studies, cum laude. Dennis Tobin with a minor in film and media studies, magna cum laude. L. Trubert with a minor in film and media studies. Bachelor of Fine Arts in Film Design, Jazz Brown. Tessa Principe. Bachelor of Fine Arts in Game Art, Shakima Blocker. Sean Bryant. Jason Casey. Joseph Kennedy, cum laude. Jack Pickering. Brittany Straley. Bachelor of Fine Arts in Writing for Film and Television, Connor Garvin with a minor in Film. Master of Music in Jazz Studies, Abel Aranda. Lauren Lark. Kirby Reed.
All right. <laughs> Bachelor of Music in Composition. Trey Davis with a minor in Creative Writing. Gabriel Garcia Leeds with a minor in Creative Writing, cum laude. Katie Hahnemann with a minor in Music Education, magna cum laude. James Journey. Kev Nenkov, magna cum laude. Gloria Quinn, cum laude. <laughs> Bachelor of Music in Music Performance. Jason Brazaban, with a minor in Music Education. <laughs> Molly Cree, Creerand or Creerand? Molly Creerand, also with a Bachelor of Science in Music, Business, Entrepreneurship, and Technology, summa cum laude. Zachary Guys, summa cum laude. Andrew Harker with a minor in music education, cum laude. Jonathan Hess with a minor in music education, summa cum laude. Daniel Horning with a minor in music education, summa cum laude. Lonel Johnson with a minor in music business, entrepreneurship, and technology. Matthew Kahn with a minor in music education, summa cum laude. Corinne Kite Dean, magna cum laude. Ian Livingston. Dan McCain with a minor in music education, magna cum laude. Alexander Podogrossi with a minor in music education. John Polanco Aviles with a ba Bachelor of Music Performance with a minor in music education. August Schultz, cum laude. Satchel Schwartz. Ravi Sinarine with a minor in music education, cum laude. <laughs> Bachelor of Music in Vocal Performance, Asia Bennett. <laughs> Haley Butcher with a minor in music education. <laughs> Trinity Cunningham. Shayla. Shayla Harris, also with a Bachelor of Science uh, in Music Business, Entrepreneurship, and Technology, magna cum laude. <laughs> Meng Tao Ching, with a minor in Music Business, Entrepreneurship, and Technology. <laughs> Matea Jones Lloyd, with a minor in Music Business, Entrepreneurship, and Technology, cum laude. Kemi Medina with a minor in music business, entrepreneurship, and technology. Lucky Peterson. Arissa. Arissa Pakuli with a minor in music business, entrepreneurship, and technology. Corey Seals. Victoria Stas, magna cum laude. Cameron Strickland with a, uh, what is your major, Cameron? Embed? Vocal performance? Awesome. Cameron Strickland with a minor in music, business, entrepreneurship, and technology. <laughs> Bachelor of Science in music business, entrepreneurship, and technology.
Alex Bell with a minor in ceramics, cum laude. Nadia Bontempo. Taylor Davies, summa cum laude. John Anthony DeMaio, summa cum laude. Kayla Dudek. John Fordyce. Bayete Garrett. Evan Holtzman Tracy. Bryce Higgins, cum laude. Frederick Iolucci, magna cum laude. Maya Johnson with a minor in songwriting, cum laude. Ethan Kerr. Christian Mayo. Joseph Mayo. Patrick McHugh. My name pronounced Shakespeare McKissick. Shakespeare McKissick. Sheck McKissick. Lucas Myers. Justin Nager. Gary Oberholzer. Alani Ramirez. Ethan Rapp. Cameron Rogers. Noah Roth. Imano Santiago. Jacob Simmons. James Simmons. James Sleeman. Absolutely. Skylar Thomas. Justin Talianco with a minor in screenwriting. Francis Zemer with a minor in songwriting. Owen Ziegler. Zieger. Owen Zieger. Monique Orozco. Bachelor of Fine Arts in Acting. <laughs> Aliyah Besh, summa cum laude. <laughs> Bria Bubenheimer with a minor in screenwriting, cum laude. <laughs> Daniel Burgess. <laughs> Carmen Camaco Luther. Carmen Camacho Luther. Mariam Castillo. Jordan Eck with a minor in musical theater, summa cum laude. Fiona Hill, magna cum laude. Katie Johnson, magna cum laude. Alexandra Jones. <laughs> Kathleen Loftus with a minor in creative writing. Jackie Marino Thomas. Emma Parsons, cum laude. Stephen Perkins, cum laude. Julia Rankin. 
Victoria Rodriguez. Symphony Thompson. Joshua Turner. Jordan. Jordan Young. Bachelor of Fine Arts. Bachelor of Fine Arts in Directing, Playwriting, and Production. Monty Cherubino. Mia Fabi, summa cum laude. Amir Gabriel Gad, cum laude. Brenna Leone. Hallie Molina, summa cum laude. Jack McManus, cum laude. Andrew McKelly with a minor in screenwriting, cum laude. Aaron Russo. Sophia Snyder. Brian Stopak. Will Vence with a minor in art history, cum laude. Bachelor of Fine Arts in Musical Theater. <laughs> Jeffrey Bear. <laughs> Sarah Bastian, magna cum laude. <laughs> Courtney Bird with a minor, minor in songwriting. <laughs> India Boone. Cacavero, magna cum laude. Clara Charles. Nathan Dorico, with a minor in music business, entrepreneurship, and technology, cum laude. Samantha Garcia, with a minor in screenwriting. Caitlin Gilhuli, cum laude. Henry Glazier. Cameron Harrigan, summa cum laude. Peter Hoffler, cum laude. John Hopewell, with a minor in music business, entrepreneurship, and technology, summa cum laude. Skylar Jeffries, with a minor in art therapy, cum laude. Audrey Johnson, summa cum laude. Lauren Kelly, summa cum laude. Laura Klinger, cum laude. Madeline Kreitzberg. Sydney Lennon, cum laude. Eleanor Linz. Gabrielle McCarran, cum laude. Colin McHugh, cum laude. Hannah Marie Moore, summa cum laude. Caroline O'Connell. Yunjong Park, cum laude. Rose Pell with a minor in business, magna cum laude. Dionysia Placid with a minor in creative writing, summa cum laude. Vincenzo Panteri. Yeah. Carol Rantovich, magna cum laude. Yeah. Kashmir Autumn Reed. Yeah. Solimar Riquelme. Yeah. Allison Saylor with a minor in business and screenwriting, cum laude. Leia Savin. Liv Semmel. Helen St. Cyr, cum laude. Garrett Twatty.
Thomas Walkowiak, cum laude. Lydia Williams with a minor in creative writing. Bachelor of Fine Arts in Theater Design and Technology. Cassandra Allen, a magna cum laude. Sarah Court, summa cum laude. Caitlin Currier Graves with a minor in creative writing, a magna cum laude. Christine De Joseph, cum laude. Lindsay Silver, cum laude. Sophie Smichek, magna cum laude. MFA in Museum Exhibition Planning and Design. Yu Zhang. MFA in Dance, Alice Nardi. We just have a few minutes left. By virtue of the authority delegated to me by the Board of Trustees of the University of the Arts from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, I hereby confer upon these degrees candidates the doctorate, master's degrees, bachelor's degrees, certificate or diploma in your respective field. And now, on my mark, all, all students will switch the tassels on their caps from right to left, signifying that you have received your diploma, that you have crossed the commencement stage, and you have achieved the honored status of graduates. On my mark, switch your tassels. I want to congratulate our graduates and thank their parents, guardians, grandparents, friends, relatives, and supporters, and everyone here today. And I also want to especially thank all the staff who work behind the scenes to get everything done. Without our incredible staff, we would not be as organized and certainly not gotten done on time. This brings us commencement exercise to a close. Please join us in Hamilton Hall for a reception immediately following the ceremony. I ask you now to stand for the recessional and remain in place until the last graduate in the recessional leaves the auditorium. Okay, thank you.